Alrighty, welcome everybody to another science lesson. Today we are learning about our final biome of this unit, the grassland and savanna biome. Obviously, the main thing about a grassland is that it's mostly grass. So, a grassland can be split into two categories. Either a temperate grassland or a tropical grassland. Another way to say tropical grassland is the savanna. So you'll hear me talking about the grassland today and the savanna. And when I say grassland, I'm mostly referring to the temperate grassland. And when I say savanna, I'm referring to the tropical grassland. So y'all might remember these words from when we learned about the forest. There's a temperate forest and a tropical forest. And the main difference between them is their climate. So a temperate grassland is the one that we will start with first, which we can just call a grassland. So grassland's climate is mostly moderate, has mostly moderate temperatures, meaning um, doesn't get too, too hot or too, too cold, nothing super extreme. And it stays on average right around um, 50 to 70 degrees Fahrenheit every year. The grassland also has moderate rainfall or a medium amount of rainfall. So that means they get between 20 and 30 inches of rain every year. Now you might remember compared to the desert, that's quite a lot. That's double or triple the amount of rain that the desert gets every year, but compared to something like the tropical rainforest, it's only about a third of the amount of rain. So grassland is a semi-arid or semi-dry climate. It gets enough rainfall to sustain lots and lots of plants, lots of grasses, but not enough rainfall to support thousands upon thousands of trees like a forest. And Similar to a temperate forest, the temperate grassland also goes through four seasons. So anything that's temperate, any temperate biome, goes through these four seasons. Winter, spring, summer, and fall. So obviously that means that a temperate grassland is going to be colder during one part of the year, during the winter, and then warmer during the summertime. Plants that exist in the grassland are, of course, you probably can already tell by the name, mostly different types of grasses. So that there are many, many different species and types of grasses, um, but they all look similar, where they just have um, these long blades of grass. And then you also sometimes have shrubs or different types of flowers small bushes in the grassland, but very, very few trees. So as you can see in this picture, mostly when you look at a grassland, you're gonna see fields upon fields of low-lying plants, grasses or shrubs or bushes that are all pretty close to the ground. And you might see a tree here or a tree there, um, but it's not going to be full of trees the way that the forest is. So um, sometimes when we talk about grasslands, we can also think of plains or prairies. Those are other ways to say grassland. So if you drive a little bit east of here, um, out towards eastern Colorado, you'll hit the edge of the Great Plains. Now where we live is pretty much right on the edge of a huge grassland that covers the middle of our country. So as you start driving east towards Kansas and Nebraska, you'll drive for hours and hours through just fields and fields of grass with not very much else, not very many trees or other types of plants. So that's, that's a grassland. It is really defined by grass. And the other thing about the grassland is that it has great soil, um, deep, thick layers of soil that stay healthy thanks to the long roots in the grass or underneath the grass. So because of this, farmers often use grassland as farmland. 
either to grow their crops or also to um, graze their livestock. So grassland animals oftentimes will be grazing herbivores, animals that can eat grass. That makes sense, right? If the most abundant food is grass, then the animals who live there will be animals who can eat grass. And then if you have herbivores, that means you can have omnivores or carnivores who eat those herbivores. So there are some predators in the grassland. And there is a large variety, so lots of variety and abundant animals in the grassland. Um, because there's so much grass and so many plants, that means that there is lots of food to fuel the entire food chain. So animals of all shapes and sizes live in the grassland. Here are just a, a small here's just a small example of some animals in the grassland from cows, another cow, another cow, lots of cows, sheep, As you can see behind them, there's all these small bushes and small shrubs, but we don't really see any trees. And then horses, of course. Here's a good example of how grasses in the grassland can be really long. They can be a couple of feet tall. They're not always the short, short grass that we know and love in our parks and our backyards. Wild grasses can be super long. And you also have deer. And of course, if you're going to have animals like sheep and deer and small birds like quail and small animals like prairie dogs and mice, with all of these small creatures, you're also going to have creatures who hunt those animals. So different kinds of birds of prey, like hawks and falcons and owls, also live in the grassland. And of course, um, bigger predators like coyote, who will hunt the things like deer and sheep and goats, some of the herbivores. So there are both predators and prey in the grassland, herbivores, omnivores, and carnivores. But the majority of the animals that we're going to find in the grassland are grazing animals. Animals who eat the abundant grass. Awesome. Okay, so pause your video. It's time for question number one. Go to your Google form and answer for me this question. Name two herbivores and two carnivores who live in the grassland two plant eaters and two meat eaters who live in the grassland. Alrighty, and you could have told me for herbivores, um, anything from small animals like mice and prairie dogs to larger grazing animals like cows and sheep and horses. And for carnivores, you could, you could tell me um, birds of prey like hawks or falcons or hunters like coyotes are also carnivores who live in the grassland. Fantastic. Okay, so we remember the grassland um, can be split into two categories, temperate grassland or tropical grassland, which we call the savanna. So now let's learn about the traits of the tropical grassland. otherwise known as the savanna. And you see these zebras here. Uh, zebras live on the savanna. And in fact, when you're thinking of the savanna, you should think of the movie The Lion King. If you've seen The Lion King, that takes place mostly on the African savanna. So the animals of the savanna are a little bit different than the animals of the temperate grassland because their climate is a little different. So different animals are suited or adapted to live here. 
So the savanna being the tropical grassland, if you remember back to when we learned about the tropical rainforest, you might remember that the word tropical means hot and humid or hot and wet. Tropical place is centered around the equator where it's the hottest and wettest on earth. So the savanna is kind of like saying the hot, wet grassland. It's still a grassland, but it's much warmer and gets much more rainfall than the temperate grassland. So let's talk about the climate and plants and animals of the savanna. The savanna's climate, instead of having moderate temperatures, they have warm or hot temperatures. Moderate rainfall, just like the temperate grassland. 30 to 40 inches of rain per year. So that's a little bit more than the temperate grassland. If you remember, the temperate grassland has gets 20 to 30 inches. So the savanna gets 30 to 40 inches. A little bit more rain per year. And the savanna only has two seasons. Just like the tropical rainforest only has two seasons, a wet season and a dry season, the tropical grassland, or the savanna, also has only two seasons, a rainy season and a dry season. So let me just mention that during the rainy season is obviously when um, plants are thriving, um, trees are growing and ponds and puddles and different oases around savanna are getting filled up. And then during the dry season, the savanna experiences a lot of wildfires. So they, they go through kind of extremes where there's really hardly any rain during the dry season. And it can, um, it can lead to bad droughts where animals have trouble finding water during those seasons and plants have trouble growing. So the dry season is full of drought and wildfires. The wet season is the time where it rains a lot and plants are doing most of their growing during the wet season. Okay, so here's a slide of the grassland climate just so that you can see the difference between them. So on the savanna slide, I have highlighted for you the main differences between the grassland climate and the savanna climate. So notice in the grassland, it says moderate, whereas savanna, it's warm or hot. In the grassland, they get 20 to 30 inches of rain. In the savanna, 30 to 40. And in the grassland, there's four seasons, whereas the savanna, two seasons. Okay, so those are the main differences between a grassland and a savanna. Savanna is hotter and wetter and also has mostly grass, some shrubs and flowers, but many more trees than the temperate grassland. That makes sense because trees need a lot of moisture to survive. So more rain equals more trees. Still, the majority of the grassland, or the majority of the savanna is grass. The savanna is still a grassland. It's just a, a tropical type of grassland. So it's still mostly grasses and shrubs and low-lying plants. They just have more trees in a savanna than a temperate grassland. And the animals you're going to see are very similar to the grassland. Still lots of grazing herbivores, so animals who eat grass. Some predators, hunters like this lion right here, and just like the temperate grassland, lots of variety, an abundance of wildlife because there's an abundance of food and water. So animals of the savanna include all of your favorite animals from the Lion King, like elephants, zebras, giraffes. Notice these big bushy trees. That's one sign that it's a savanna and not a grassland because there's more trees. Antelope. This is a specific type of antelope called an oryx. And once again, you see this giant field of grass, but 
instead of just grass, you also see tree, 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 different trees popping up on the horizon. It's not crowded like a forest. The trees are still really spread out. Just a little bit more trees than the grassland. And you also have oxen or black ox. And omnivores like rhinos, hippos. Oh, rhinos are herbivores, actually. I mean, omnivores such as hippos and hyenas. And of course, if you're going to have all of these herbivores and these omnivores, then you're also going to have carnivores, the predators. So you have cheetah and lions, of course, who are the hunters of the savanna. Um, you'll notice that they're nicely adapted for this environment because of their tan brown fur which allows them to really nicely blend into this tall grass. And of course, the main feature of the savanna is grass, just like in the temperate grassland. Alrighty, pause your video. We are on question number two. Name two herbivores and two carnivores who live in the savanna. So even though grassland and savanna have a lot in common, the types of animals that you can find there are very different. So tell me two different herbivores and two carnivores that you could find in the savanna. Awesome. As far as herbivores go, you could have told me elephant or rhino, giraffe, zebra, antelope. Those are all herbivores in the savanna. And carnivores in the savanna would be creatures like lions or cheetahs. They only eat meat or hunt other animals for their food. Alrighty, so today to review, we've learned about two different types of grassland. The temperate grassland and the tropical grassland. Or we could say the grassland and the savanna. So both the grassland and the savanna have a moderate climate. Neither of them get to very extreme temperatures. They're both pretty um, middle of the road, average, average climate. Um, they're both mostly made of grasses and shrubs. That's their primary feature. And they both have abundant wildlife. So lots and lots of different animals and plants who live there because there is plenty of food, water, shelter, and space for all the organisms. The main differences, so that's what they have in common. Now the main differences between them are that the grassland has four seasons, slightly colder, less rain, and fewer trees. Whereas the savanna has two seasons instead of four, just a wet and a dry season. The savanna is slightly warmer. It's more warm or hot. It doesn't ever get to be winter time in the savanna. It's because it's tropical, right? The savanna gets more rain than the grasslands, so 30 to 40 inches instead of 20 to 30. And the savanna has more trees. So the tropical grasslands like a savanna, you're going to find uh, mostly in Africa, some parts of India and Australia. Um, we don't really have any savannas in North America where we live. On North America and up in Europe, you're going to find mostly temperate grasslands. So the grasslands that we have here in Colorado, on the eastern side of Colorado, those are temperate grasslands where you're going to find cows and deer and horses, coyotes, prairie dogs, those types of animals. Okay, awesome. Pause your video. Let's go to our third and final question on the Google form. 
what makes the savanna different from the temperate grassland? Or another way to say that, what makes the tropical grassland different from the temperate grassland? Sweet. And you could have mentioned anything from the number of seasons, um, the amount of rainfall is different, the amount of trees is different, or the type of wildlife who live there is also different. Okay, I hope you learned something amazing about the grassland today. Grasslands are truly beautiful places and important places on our planet. Um, they're home to many different types of wildlife and um, also are sources of um, great soil for us to grow crops and to graze our livestock. So they're very important, not only to the earth as a whole, but also to our human species. And um, I hope that you have learned something interesting and that we will continue to protect our grasslands around the world. That's all for now. You are ready to go and take your DOL. Let me know if you have any questions and I will talk to you later. Remember that our biomes test is tomorrow. So this is our final biome. And tomorrow we will test on all of the biomes that we've learned about so far. The ocean, the temperate forest, the tropical forest, the desert, the tundra, the um, temperate grassland, and also the tropical savanna. Okay, alrighty, talk to you later. Thank you very much for watching and listening, and um, I hope you have a great day. Bye.